Dear students, this is Manatush Day, your English helpline on the go. Today I am in front of you with a video lecture on We Are Not Afraid to Die If We Are All Together, which is from the textbook Hornbill taught in CBSE curriculum in 11th standard. If you are watching my channel for the first time or if you haven't subscribed to my channel so far, kindly subscribe it now. Dear students, Today, I am going to focus on theme of the lesson in brief and story at a glance. So, dear students, let's begin. The story we are not afraid to die if we can all be together is a story of extreme courage and skill exhibited by Gordon Cook, his family and crewmen in a war with water and waves for survival. It is an autobiographical account of an adventure that a family experienced in their voyage across the sea. Now let's move on to story at a glance. Dear students, I shall specify you the paragraphs as I narrate you the story in brief. Well, moving on paragraph 1 and 2 together. In July 1976, the narrator with his wife Mary, son Jonathan and daughter Susan set sail from Plymouth, England to repeat a round-the-world voyage which Captain James Cook had made 200 years earlier. For about 16 years, the captain and his wife spent all their leisure time sharpening their seafaring skills by traveling in British seas. The boat Wave Walker, 23 meters long and weighing 30 tons with a beautiful wooden structure was professionally built and they took months to fit and test it in the roughest weather. Now let me summarize para 3. The first leg of their planned three-year-long journey which consisted of one leg 5,000 kilometers ended safely. They sailed down the west coast of Africa to Cape Town. In their journey, they hired two crewmen, an American named Larry Vigil and a switch named Harv Sigler. These two men would help them to tackle one of the roughest seas, Southern Indian Ocean. Now let me move on to para 4 to 6. On the second day, the, they encountered strong gales when they came out of Cape Town. The gales continued for weeks together with the waves going up to 15 meters as high as their main mast. On December 25, they were 3,500 kilometers away and had a wonderful time celebrating Christmas in spite of having rough weather. On January 2nd, the waves were gigantic and they had put up only a small sail in the front part of the ship. When the ship rose to the top of each wave, they could see the endless huge sea rolling towards them. In order to slow down the speed, they dropped the storm jib. They secured everything tightly with the ropes, did their life raft deal, made lines ready, put on oil skins and life jackets and took extreme precaution to ride over the waves. Now para 7 to 9. <clears throat> At about 6 pm there was a dreadful silence. The wind stopped blowing and the sky grew dark. With a growing roar the huge cloud towered over the ship. With <laughs> they realized that it was not cloud but a huge wave. A dreadful explosion shook the deck and the torrent of water broke over the ship. The writer's head smashed into the steering wheel. He was losing consciousness but felt quite peaceful. A few meters away, wave walker was near capsizing. Waves tossed the captain around the deck. His left ribs cracked and teeth were broken. His mouth was filled with blood but he somehow hung onto the wheel. 
Now let's move on to para 10 to 15 together. There was water everywhere on the ship, but he could not dare to leave the steering wheel and go down to investigate. Mary appeared from the front hatch and announced in great alarm that they were sinking. The lower decks have smashed, allowing the water to seep through. Larry and her were pumping out water like madmen. Clothes, crockery, charts, tins, and toys lay scattered and floating on water. The captain half swam and half crawled into the children's cabin. Sue had a big bump over her eyes. With a hammer, screws, and canvas, he struggled back on the deck to make repairs on starboard side through which water was entering with every wave. Somehow, he managed to cover the gaping holes with canvas and waterproof hatch covers. Now let's move on to para 16 to 19 together. The electric pump went out of order due to a short circuit with a spare pump connected to outer pipe they managed to drain water out. The night dragged on in a routine of pumping, steering and sending radio signals. The medic calls were in vain as there was no response from the other end. Sue's swelling got worse and a deep cut on her arms was also prominent. She was the daughter okay, of the captain. Uh, now para 20 to 21. The boat's reef frames were smashed. The whole section of the starboard frame had nothing to hold it up except for a few cardboard partitions. They knew that the wave walker, that is the ship, would not hold them long enough to reach Australia. The captain checked their charts and calculated that there were two small islands nearby towards their east. They planned to reach one of the islands named Island Amsterdam, which was a French scientific base. That could be possible if the winds dropped and they could put up their sail. The great wave had already put the supporting engine out of order. Now let's move on to para 22. They could not put any sail of the, on the main mast for the fear of it being torn down. So they hosted only the storm jeep and headed for the island. Mary found some meat and biscuits and they took their first meal in two days. Now let's move on to para 23 to 26. The sense of relief was short-lived as the weather worsened through the night, creating an alarming situation again the next dawn. Jonathan asked his father, Jonathan is the son of the captain, Jonathan asked his father whatever they were going to die but John said firmly that they were not afraid of dying if they were all together. The narrator was speechless and left the cabin with a strong determination to fight the sea with all his strength. The narrator sat holding Mary's hand that evening as the motion of the ship brought in more and more water through the broken planks. Both of them felt their impending death. Mary is the uh, wife of the captain here, the narrator here, para 27 to 29. On the morning of 6th January, the wind had ceased and wave walker rode out. The narrator went to the chart room and concluded that they were looking for a 65 kilometer wide island in the vast 1,50,000 kilometers of Australia. While the narrator and his wife were busy making calculations, Sue came to them, their daughter, with a swallow and head swollen head on the left side and her eyes had narrowed to slits. Sue expressed her love for her parents with a card where she had written how much she loved them both. Her spirit strengthened their determination to fight the turbulency and came out of it safely. Now para 30 to 40. They had lost the main compass and had to manage with a spare one which, which was not corrected for magnetic variations. At about 2 p.m., he inspected the deck and instructed Larry to steer the ship at 185 degrees. They became hopeful of discovering island Amsterdam by 5 in the evening. Around 6 p.m., Jonathan with Sue 
behind appeared beside the narrator's bunk and asked for a hug to his father. He then told his father that he was the best father in the world and the best captain. They have island Amsterdam and the narrator rushed to the deck to confirm it. It was a bleak piece of volcanic rock with very little vegetation, yet it seemed to be the most beautiful place on earth. Now, paragraph 41 and 42. They anchored off the ship for the night. The next morning, all 28 inhabitants of the island cheered them and took them ashore. On landing his feet on the island, the narrator recounted the hard work of Larry and Herbie and his wife, Mary, who have all displayed the teamwork and worked optimistically even under extreme stressful situation. He thought of Sue, the little seven-year-old girl who endured the pain of the terrible injury for which she underwent six minor operations to remove recurring blood clot. And Jonathan, his son, who displayed amazing resilience in braving impending death. So, dear students, to conclude, we have seen that finally they reached island Amsterdam, a volcanic island where they were welcomed by 28 inhabitants. Thus, the collective strength and never failing optimism of the sailors made it possible for them to come out of the jaws of death. Though Jonathan and Susan did not do anything to save Wayworker, but their courage, faith, and optimism gave extra strength and persistence to the narrator and his team. The story is the living example of how optimism helps human beings endure direct stress. Along with Larry and Harv Sigler, the narrator also fought the sea head on and displayed the presence of mind during the crisis. He did not worry about the loss of equipment. He used whatever was available there. His self-confidence and practical knowledge helped them to steer out of storm and reach the island Amsterdam. That's all about the discussion of the story. For further details regarding the NCAT solution and extra questions, kindly visit my website, the link of which is flashed on your screen and also given in the description. Till I come back with another concept video, please keep watching my channel and thanks for watching.